Hey there crew, today we're going to learn about the artist Georgia O'Keeffe and we're going to learn three techniques for our triptych. So in the slideshow I presented uh, a triptych is three artworks together and we're going to do three different versions uh, or three different artworks that we put together uh, that reflect the work of Georgia O'Keeffe, a famous American artist. Uh, she was very good at creating landscapes and zooming in on images to make them seem more abstract and more uh, exciting because they were so big and zoomed in. And then she also loved different skies and clouds. And in the slideshow I gave you a lot of different examples of her work and then also showed you uh, how I created a triptych as well. And I'm going to show you those three techniques. I'm just going to show you on one piece of paper to kind of uh, make it smaller and quicker and easier for you to uh, see and then I'll show you my finished examples that will be part of my finished project afterwards. So the first technique is going to be zooming in on something. So George O'Keefe's favorite thing to zoom in on were flowers, so things found in nature. Um, you don't have to zoom in on things like Georgia did, but I do want you to zoom in on something. So if you wanted to do something from nature, perfecto. You could find a flower or an image of a flower or even recreate one of Georgia's works. There are many different ways to do that. Um, or you could find something special to you that you find unique or interesting or that really reflects who you are, and you could zoom in on that and make it seem more abstract because you zoomed in. So, let's say here's one of my papers, right here, and let's say I was uh, choosing to do a flower just like George O'Keefe, and I wouldn't want uh, to have so many flowers and a whole landscape scene, I want to zoom in so it's almost like we're a little bug on that flower, or uh, a little microscopic person on whatever you zoom in on as well. So let's say I'm looking at a image of George's work over here. Um, so I might get the little details in the center of a flower. And it's pretty abstract when you think about it. So I'm looking and then it branches off into petals. So once it is uh, zoomed in, it is much more abstract and interesting. And if you really up close, you wouldn't even know what you're looking at. But I want to show some of the leaves coming on. Boom. So abstract, zoomed in. You can't really tell exactly what it is. But then maybe if you step back or looked at an um, image that wasn't so zoomed in, you'd be like, oh, yeah, that's a flower, uh, just like Giorgio Keith. So with the zoomed in, we do it lightly with pencil. And then I'm going to use tempera cakes. Uh, or you could use watercolor, um, or really any kind of paint that you have. I'm going to use tempera cakes here because I like the look of how they layer. So I have my water container, I have my brushes, I have my tempera cakes. So as you know, we only wake up one color at a time, but we can mix them on our paper. So we don't want to mix them in our tray, we want to mix them when they're on our paper. That way uh, we keep the tempera cakes clean and pristine. Uh, for other people to use as well or for us to use next time. If you accidentally mix in your tray, remember just get a little wet paper towel, scrub it up, dub, you clean it up. So you start light and then you could add on top. So if the center of this flower has some yellow in it, I woke up yellow with a wet brush. And you know what? It's actually more of a lemon lime. I'll zoom in on the image here so you can see it a little better. If it's a little lemon lime, what would I add to that yellow? A little green. So I rinse, rinse, rinse my brush, wake up a little green, and I'll add that into the wet yellow. If you get too much green, uh, of course you can dab it up with a paper towel, or you could just rinse your brush and add more yellow too. And sometimes you have to wait for layers to dry. So if you're waiting for layers to dry, you can move on to another spot in the painting. Maybe I want to get those background leaves are green over here. And you know what? George's work, some of the leaves almost look turquoisey. So mixing with that green, I might wake up a little blue. 
and add that as like the shadow and darker areas and while it's still wet you can go in and that's called wet on wet technique or you could wait for it to dry and paint on top that way so really you could do a variety of different things um, and then as it dries you layer up and if you want you could go back in when it's all dry you could sharpie outline or you could leave it without an outline and just the paint so that is zooming in on an object that's one of your three uh, artworks that become part of your triptych or your trio group of three next uh, we're going to do like a sky so a sky with clouds one of George's favorite things and something I saw at the um, Museum of Modern Art was one of George's huge sky above clouds paintings so cool so I'm going to use uh, some liquid temper you could use acrylics or again use whatever materials you have um, it would be cool with any material that you could blend and mix I'm gonna use this paint because I like how that mixes as well so I might get the base layer and you probably wonder why do I have a reddish pink in there well you could make your sky a sunset or sunrise or it could be pitch black dark um, with a moon or it could be middle of the day with the sun it's up to you all right it's your sky um, and your clouds and your colors you could also be completely abstract and whack and not use normal colors that are in the sky um, it's up to you it could also be space we're just focusing on big zoomed in sky some clouds um, it's up to you maybe some shooting stars or planets are in the background it's up to you I'm gonna mix a little white with my turquoise maybe get a little dark blue in there too so you can add a base layer of the sky think about foreground um, middle ground background and kind of the horizon if you're at the horizon line um, your colors would be a little lighter because it's like farther away so I might add more white in there to lighten it up and then it could get darker as you get toward the background or the or I mean the foreground excuse me the sky that's directly over your head is actually closer to you than the sky far away at the horizon line and maybe I'll blend in a little pink there for some sunset action again I'm going super fast you would take your time then I'm going to while it's still wet or you could wait till it's completely dry up to you while it's still wet though I'm gonna show you how I could add some clouds just by getting white on my brush kind of doing tappy tap tap paint if I can just tappy tap tap it starts to blend with some of that blue so it's almost like a little atmospheric you can see a little bit through the cloud so you see some of the sky shining through and I want a variety of size and shape in my clouds I don't want them to all be the exact same I don't want them to all be the same color either maybe you want to get a little bit of that sunset in there some cotton candy clouds as I like to call them once you get a little pinkish purple going on in the cloud could be like cotton candy or you could be like some of George's cloud painting where they're pure white and they almost look like uh, little peanuts or candies floating in the sky they're not perfect cloud shapes they're just kind of organic weird shapes so you could kind of do it any way that you want again it doesn't have to be sunset it could be night day you could include sun stars moons planets you name it all right so one of our triptychs something zoomed in one of them uh, the sky with either clouds or whatever your heart desires then the last one I'm going to show you is pretty interesting uh, it's going to be a desert landscape because as you know from the slideshow Georgia O'Keeffe spent lots of her time in 
uh, New Mexico. She also spent time in New York City as well. So if you wanted your landscape to be one of her skyscraper scenes or big city scenes, that would be pretty sweet too. So you could do big city or you could do desert, but either way, it's a landscape. And for the landscape, uh, we are going to sketch it uh, lightly with pencil first. And I'm going to maybe get some mountains there, kind of a plateaued mountain. Some vegetation, maybe some bushes in the front there, boom. So again, I want you to look at some images, uh, either photographs or paintings of landscapes, or better yet, you could even look at uh, George O'Keefe paintings and recreate one that you like. Again, I chose desert, you could do big city, it's up to you. Um, then you will also, if you want, if you're doing a desert, she also liked to include um, like the skulls of animals floating in the sky over her landscapes. So you could um, use a separate piece of paper to collage a skull if you want. So I'm looking at the image of a skull right now and I'm going to lightly uh, sketch it in. So obviously this would be too big to add into this landscape but make it appropriate for the size of your paper. I just want you to be able to see it. So I'm looking at what I'm drawing here. And I got the basic shapes in there. All right. And also some of her uh, skulls that floated in the sky had flowers around them. So you could do that too if you want. And I'm going to use a little charcoal and a little chalk to get my skull going here. So I'm going to use what's called vine charcoal, very thin charcoal, light charcoal. I'm going to get some of those shadows in there in the darker areas. And I'm just very lightly pressing on the paper because vine charcoal is fragile and breakable. So. I'm barely touching it. I'm not Hulk smashing by any means. And then I can use a little blendy blend tool or you could use your finger and you can blend that charcoal in and now you see how it's spreading out. It's also getting lighter. So if it gets too light, add more charcoal. If it's too dark, you can erase vine charcoal very easily, especially if you didn't press very hard. So again, don't Hulk smash it because A, you'll break the vine charcoal B, uh, you'll get too dark and it might not erase that well. So I, I'm going to prove it to you. If you get areas too dark, you can easily erase that vine charcoal. I might get the horns a little lighter. Um, you also might want to add uh, some chalk to that char or to the skull. There's some warmer areas. I'm using like a warm sandy tan. I'm going to just blend it with my finger quick. Maybe even a lighter sandy tan in the horns. And then you could also, of course, use bright white for some highlights. And if you got something too light, you could just go back in with that charcoal and darken up the darkest darks. And again, you don't have to use charcoal or uh, chalk, you don't even have to do a skull uh, floating in the sky either. Then, for the landscape, I would love if you used a little chalk so you could do this new technique I'm going to show you. So I have colored chalk, I have some uh, warm and cool colors here, and some neutrals. I'm going to just make marks on the paper. I'm not blending the chalk in. I'm just making marks and I can layer some of those marks, some uh, lighter, some darker, some warm, some cool. So deserts are mostly warm colors though. So I'm getting some different oranges in the, the ground there. Maybe even some red 
areas, and I've been looking at a George O'Keefe painting here, so. And then maybe some yellows as well for some of the desert sand. And I'll get some of that vegetation down there. Then the sky, the sky is going to be darker again at the fore, or the yes, the foreground directly over your head. And then in the horizon toward the background, it's going to get lighter. So I'll use a lighter blue. All right. So once you have kind of layered some chalk, I haven't blended it in. I'm going to blend it in with what's called liquid starch. So I have a cup of liquid starch. I use the Purex brand liquid starch like this. Uh, again, if you don't have liquid starch, you could just do a chalk drawing or like a watercolor painting. But if you have these materials, I would love if you did this little experiment. So you're still going to blend with your finger, but you're going to just dip your finger in liquid starch first. The liquid starch mixing with the chalk will kind of turn this into an oil painting, and that's what Georgia O'Keeffe was famous for. So it'll look like it's an oil painting, but in fact you use chalk and liquid starch, and you know that chalk can be dusty sometimes. If you use liquid starch over chalk though, it fixes the chalk to the paper, so you will not have a dust storm or a big mess once it's dry. It'll just be wet for a little bit, but then it'll dry right up and be ready to rock and roll. So I've dipped my finger in the liquid starch. I'm gonna start blending here in the warm colors. And also once it's dry, you could go back in and add more details uh, on top, but not when it's wet. So it's kind of blending. I'll get the, the green mountain here. That's looking pretty sweet. I'll blend some of that green into the orange so it's a nice smooth transition. Now I'll get the sky going. So even in that empty white space where I didn't layer chalk, it's blending and it's lighter at the horizon line, darker in the foreground, bolder in the foreground there in the sky. Gets lighter down toward the horizon. So right now it's wet and needs to dry, but that chalk, it doesn't look like chalk anymore. It looks like a smooth, shiny oil painting. Pretty cool. And then once it's all dry, I could cut out my skull here um, and collage it or glue it on top of the landscape and actually in my final copy of one that I'm going to show you I have it popping out so it looks like the skull is coming out of the landscape three dimensionally so pretty cool but there are three different artworks that you're going to create to create a triptych so a trio a group of three artworks side by side by side is a triptych so George O'Keefe like to zoom in on different objects. You can pick something to zoom in on. She loved the sky and clouds, and you're gonna work on that as well, any time of day or night. Then she also loved landscapes of the desert, skulls floating in the landscapes, pretty abstract and surreal, but you could also do a city landscape, uh, like a cityscape, or any kind of landscape you want, but if you wanna try the chalk and liquid starch, Ooh, I suggest that. What a cool experiment that is. So, I'm going to show you some of the finished uh, examples here. So, here's a zoomed in flower uh, painting that I did with temper cakes. I did it light with pencil first. I layered, layered, layered. Zoomed in. I chose flowers like George O'Keefe. I actually looked at George O'Keefe paintings when I did this because that's who's been inspiring me. But, you could zoom in on whatever you want. Then I did a cloud painting, and I again chose a little sunset because I like the cotton candy clouds there. So I mixed the paint while it was still wet. I added the clouds, and look at the texture you can achieve when the colors are still mixing when it's wet on wet. Pretty cool if I do say so myself. And I did get a little abstract and surreal. Uh, like George O'Keefe, I have some clouds turn different ways uh, and different sizes, and that variety creates some rhythm as well. They're all clouds, but some different sizes, different uh, colors. That creates rhythm, principle of design. Love it. And then last but not least, here's a desert scene from New Mexico. 
and man, I love the layering and blending that I was able to achieve with that liquid starch over the chalk. And then, as I told you, my uh, skull and flowers are popping off. You can see the shadows underneath because it's coming forward at you three-dimensionally. It's easier to see in real life than on the screen, but it's coming towards you. It's adding a three-dimensional element to a two-dimensional painting of a landscape. And then once they're all together, like on the slideshow, it creates a trio or a triptych. So you're learning new vocabulary. You're combining uh, some science with your art, and you're learning a little uh, social studies and art history as well about the artist Georgia O'Keeffe, who is actually from the United States as well. So pause, rewind, uh, look at the slideshow again, listen to the story about Georgia, and I hope you enjoyed these techniques as you make a triptych. Adios, amigos.